Psalms are universally well loved. Everywhere I've taught or preached, people tell me how Psalms is their favorite book of the Bible or how Psalms encourage them through tough times. Doubtless, the book of Psalms is immensely popular. I mean, who hasn't heard of Psalm 23? I know for me, that was the first Psalm I learned as a child. But for all its popularity, the book of Psalms can be monotonous or disturbing or perplexing. I think it's largely untapped. By that I mean it seems that most people engage only the most well-known psalms without understanding the message of all 150 psalms. Also, and perhaps more commonly, people tend to use the psalms simply to feel good, almost like a pick-me-up drink or an elixir for downtimes taken to restore one's energy or good spirits. I firmly believe that the Psalms offer much, much more. My goal in this podcast is to provide an overview of Psalms. First, we'll talk about motivation, why study the Psalms. And then, we'll move to some facts and definitions. Part 1. Motivation. Why study the Psalms? I think it's good to get a cue from Jesus. During his earthly ministry, Jesus prayed the Psalms and recited from them often in his preaching. He used the Psalms to answer questions and to defend his ministry. He referred to the Psalms to show that he was the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. And we know that he even quoted from Psalm 22, Why have you forsaken me? Uh, He quoted that as he was dying on the cross. Like other Jews, Jesus would sing Psalms. After the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples sang a hymn. We find that recorded in Matthew 26. And in that time, Jewish hymns were traditionally from the Hallel series. That's the Psalms 114 through 118. It was traditionally sung antiphonally, like with alternate responses from two groups. It's almost like two groups singing to each other. That was how they would sing it before. Anyway, continuing, at the end of Luke's Gospel in chapter 24, and this is after the resurrection, Jesus says to his disciples, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. That's Luke 24, 44. Here, Jesus refers to the tripartite division of the Hebrew Bible. Three parts, with Psalms representing the third part. So you got the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. And we got Psalms representing the third part, presumably because of its length. Let's move on to the Apostles. Generally, we find Paul writing on the importance of the Old Testament. And he says this, uh, emphasizing it many times. For instance, in Romans 15, verse 4, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and encouragement of scriptures we might have hope. Similarly, he writes in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11, These things meaning the events of the Old Testament, these things happened to them, the Israelites, as examples and were written down as warnings for us in whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. 